Okay, uh, so I'm going to be talking about uh, tree growth trends. Uh, this is going to be data from uh, the Forest Service UVM Joint Forest Ecology and Dendrochronology Lab. Uh, some of the key players you can see on the screen, Gary Hawley, Shelley Rayback, Jen Pontius, Ali Kusiba, and others. Um, and th this is data uh, as opposed to inventory data. Uh, this is tree increment core data, uh, which is easy to collect, rather hard to interpret or, or measure sometimes. Uh, but importantly, it's datable in annual growth increments so that you actually get a long-term record of year-to-year -year changes in growth. Uh, and that can be over decades or centuries. Uh, it can allow you to look at average growth, so if you're wanting to see what species is growing well or not in the landscape, it gets you that. But it also gets you growth trajectories. So is a species changing its growth over time? Um, and importantly, because it's an annual measure, it also gives you um, a look at events, things like uh, a, a release or a, a, a damage event like the 1998 ice storm. I'll be showing a bunch of data from our group, um, highlighting BMC work, uh, but it's all the data when you look at the graphs. The y-axis uh, is basal area increment, so it's uh, linear, not linear, it's an area of growth over time. So. Uh, the first I want to highlight is VMC's uh, work, which is something we did for them, because they were interested in uh, evaluating what's the tree growth been like on their Mount Mansfield, uh, you know, showcase site over the last uh, 50 or plus years. Uh, they have a lot of other ancillary data for the, that area, but not much on tree growth. So we did three transects on Mount Mansfield, three elevational zones, uh, low, medium, and high elevation to get different forest types. Uh, so at the high elevation, we got uh, red spruce and balsam fir uh, trees. At the mid elevation zone, red spruce, sugar maple, and yellow birch. And at the low, uh, red spruce, sugar maple, and red maple. And importantly, uh, these trees are like growing right next to each other. So what we're getting is a species to species comparison on how are they doing relative to one another over the same time periods. These are the transects up uh, Mount Mansfield. Um, so you can see, mm, is this going to work? Yes. So uh, you can see low elevation, mid elevation, and high up three uh, watersheds. The only watershed we didn't do was the ski area because we thought there might be artifacts there. Um, <laughs> um, and so this is a picture of all the species together uh, over all elevations at the same time. So it's really hard to see, perhaps. But um, I just wanted to show you the, the big picture trajectory. So you see at the early part of the of the chronology, these trees were probably not um, in the overstory. By the end, they're the dominant and co-dominant trees there. So they're, they're struggling to get up there and compete well. But over time, especially in the last 20 plus years, so this is broken up into 20 year increments, uh, in the recent time, you can see that they're really growing quite differently on the mountain. Uh, the bottom uh, species on this, on this curve, the lowest growing species, are balsam fir and sugar maple. Um, they're really not doing so great um, in a, in the, in a uh, big picture sense. Um, in contrast, the very top of the, uh, of the growth uh, curves, that's uh, yellow birch over a long time period, uh, peaking here though, um, and then red maple more recently, especially in a very recent turn. That's uh, red maples in red, appropriately. Um, and a species that's close to uh, our heart uh, red spruce, you can see it's having a changing trajectory over time. You know, sometimes that's in black, sometimes good growth, sometimes uh, less growth with events, these events being winter injury events, but recently just taking off in, in growth so that it's, it's uh, really doing super well now. Now, that, that's a very big picture um, look, but again, we looked at elevational uh, differences, and that's actually quite informative too. So, for example, in the low elevation, the top panel, that's, uh, that's red maple. The red dots on all of these indicate the years, the five years of greatest growth for that species. And you'll see that uh, red maple is actually doing pretty well now. It's, it's peak growth is really back here, but it's, it's, it's been doing very well for a while. And recently, it's just taken off. Um, and red spruce, similarly, is doing actually fairly well. Um, and its peak growth, at least at this elevation, uh, tended to be back uh, in the uh, uh, late 80s, um, et cetera. But again, it's doing quite well now. And in contrast, uh, sugar maple, its peak growth was actually back in the 70s and 80s, um, or here, 80, uh, 80s and 90s, early 90s. 
um, and it's had a, a bit of a decline. But this, this look at this competition changes as we go up in elevation. So for example, at the mid-elevations, red spruce is doing super well. Uh, indeed, uh, most of the highest growth has been since this, that, this is a winter injury event in 2003. So since then, they've just taken off in their, their really superlative growth. Uh, sugar maple, uh, peak growth was actually 70s and 80s. It's, it's been kind of gradually uh, uh, declining since then. And yellow birch, uh, peak growth I uh, back here, but really just doing very well overall. In contrast, when you go to the high elevation, um, it, both species are, have fairly low growth. You can imagine it's a, it's a harsh environment, uh, short growing seasons. Uh, balsam fir is almost a, almost a flat line. Um, and red spruce, surprisingly, even though it declined quite a bit uh, in the 70s and 80s, has been on a steady increase since then. So, so that's just one thing you can do. You can look at head-to-head -head comparisons in the same environment, which species are doing well, which ones aren't, um, and how is that, that trajectory changing over time? But you can also, because these are plot-based data, look at, um, get potential drivers of growth, information on things like uh, climate adjusted for, uh, climate adjusted for elevation, or uh, sulfur and nitrogen deposition data, or atmospheric uh, CO2 concentrations, things that might either be uh, helping the growth or hindering the growth of the species over time. And you can do correlation principle components analysis and see what, what might be accounting for these uh, trajectories of growth. Interestingly, when we did this for Mount Mansfield, uh, four of the five species, uh, red spruce, balsam fir, red maple, and yellow birch, actually showed positive relationships uh, of growth with higher temperatures. So especially things that were indices of an of a increasing um, uh, uh, growth season. So uh, these trees are actually, as temperatures go up, they actually seem to be responding positively. In contrast, uh, sugar maple uh, showed several negative relationships with temperature, so higher temperatures, not so good. Um, and the only positive relationship was with precipitation, uh, perhaps highlighting the, the drought sensitivity of the species. But that's just one place, and it's really why I'm here is to plug a bigger idea. Um, so uh, it's great to know a lot about uh, an area, especially one that's in intensively sampled for other reasons, but we're trying to get an idea of the big picture. We're trying to understand the growth for many species over many places and even get regional uh, analyses. So we're building a dendrochronology database. We're getting many species um, into this database, many locations. We're starting with Vermont, but we're going to uh, uh, expand from there. And we're going to combine this, this growth data, plot-based growth data, with plot-based other information. You know, elevation, nutrition, uh, weather, pollution, other data sets. Um, now, one important thing about building this, this dendrochronology database is it helps us put our plot-based or site-based uh, data into some kind of context. So for example, this is data for red spruce um, for uh, both Mount Mansfield, which is the black line here, and for a regional assessment where this is 452 trees from throughout um, Vermont and New Hampshire. And one thing you can see, uh, which is perhaps heartening or at least informative, is that the, the plots on Mount Mansfield actually track pretty well with the region. It, this is a, what, what's going on with the species, both these, these dips with winter injury events, but the recent release, it's not a, a site-based phenomenon. It's a broad phenomenon. In contrast, if you look at sugar maple for Mount Mansfield, which again is the black line, uh, versus uh, a bigger data set, 163 trees at the Hubbard Brook Experimental Forest, you see that these, these are not exactly superimposed on one another. Um, the sugar maple at Mount Mansfield have historically, over a long period of time, grown significantly less than uh, at Hubbard Brook. Uh, and right now they're converging, in fact they're very close right now, but that's because at Hubbard Brook there was a significant uh, decrease in growth, um, coincident with um, you know, the uh, maple decline in the uh, 70s and 80s. So, so one thing we can get, though, is, is a comparative analysis. Um, but we're also trying to look at the bigger region and see what are the big drivers of growth for a variety of tree species. So 
Um, so baseline information for regional productivity is nice, but also how are these trees responding to changes in climate, acid deposition, atmospheric nitrogen fertilization, that's a possibility, as sulfur uh, uh, pollution uh, goes down, atmospheric CO2 uh, increases, et cetera. So what are some of these big pictures? I'm just gonna end with, with one example of using this kind of regional um, approach. This is data for 37 red spruce plots in Vermont, New Hampshire, 441 trees. And we combined the plot-based growth data with plot-based estimates of acid deposition um, exceedance. So, so much acid deposition coming into that site that it should exceed the capability of the site to uh, productively deal with that inputs. So what we have here are um, the bottom line are the growth for plots that are uh, pr uh, projected to be, uh, have too much acid deposition. So they're in exceedance of their critical loads. And the higher line is the uh, growth on uh, red spruce on plots that are not in exceedance. We predict that there's not too much pollution coming in. And basically we've, what we see is for the entire 60 year chronology and especially for periods where there are significant uh, winter injury events that the, the red spruce on the exceedance plots really are growing uh, more poor, poorly. So we're, we're helping understand what are one of the drivers dr uh, uh, driving the growth of, of these trees. Um, so this is to remind me, not that, that I uh, should ask for questions, but that you should, you should write down your questions or, or uh, put them in uh, so that I can maybe answer them. And remember, dendrochronology database. Uh, thanks. <laughs>